Can okay. everyone hear me? So I'm going, about, I'm going to be talking about osteogenesis imperfecta, mainly in dogs, but can also be shown in cats. So kind of going over the definition, it's an inherited disorder characterized by extreme fragility of the bones, and is a form of osteochondrodysplasia, which means it kind of affects the skeleton development, growth, and maintenance, and it impairs the normal development of collagen, which leads to like thin and brittle teeth and bones, and this is sometimes more commonly referred to as brittle bone disease. So kind of going over in the inheritance is kind of interesting because which gene is affected, it can be either autosomal recessive or autosomal dominant. So in the mutation of the COL1A2 gene, it is autosomal dominant, seeing you only need one copy of the gene for the disease to present itself. And this is more commonly seen in golden retrievers, so it's kind of referred to as a golden retriever type. However, you have the mutation in the SERPINH1 gene, it is autosomal recessive. So you need both copies of the uh, gene for disease to present itself. And this is more commonly seen in dachshund, and it'll kind of be referred to as the dachshund type. So kind of going over the difference between these two genes. So in the COL1A2, it provides instructions for making part of type 1 collagen. And type 1 collagen is the most abundant form of collagen in the body. However, in the SERPINH1 gene encodes a member of the serpent superfamily of serine proteinase inhibitors, and it plays a role in collagen biosynthesis as a collagen specific molecular chaperone. Just interrupt me if I'm going too fast, if you need me to pause. Just don't throw things at me. Okay. Is everyone good with this slide? No? Okay. That's quite a word there, that osteochondro. Mm -hmm. And that's a type of osteoarthritis. There's a little fun fact. So if you go to osteoarthritis, osteochondrodysplasia, and then you have osteogenesis imperfecta. Is everyone good with this slide? So no, this is okay. purely an ear condition? Mm-hmm. So they can follow family members and... It is recommended in breeding clubs to test your breeders to see if they are carriers for this. Um, I'll kind of talk about it a little bit more, especially in dachshunds, because it is recessive, so you don't always know when, who is carrying it, just from outwardly looking. But you can, you can test for these. Mm-hmm. And I'll go over testing soon. Okay. Tell me if you go through this one again and now check the demo. Okay. So in the COL1A2 gene, um, that one provides instructions for making the type 1 collagen. Um, it's kind of, it's just the most abundant form of collagen. However, in the other gene, um, it's, it's more used like in the production of collagen, but as a chaperone versus actually being directly making it itself. Um, and again, let's see, this one is the golden retriever type, which is dominant, and this is more the dachshund type, which is recessive. Is everyone good? Okay, so just a brief overview of what collagen is. Um, it's one of the most abundant proteins in the body. I think roughly like one-third of proteins is collagen, um, and it's found in bone, skin, muscle, and tendons. Um, and its main kind of function is holding the body together because it provides strength and structure. Um, it gives bone their elasticity and is mainly secreted by connective tissue. Um, and naturally, as the body gets older, uh, we produce less collagen. So here's kind of just a picture showing, um, how, like comparing younger skin versus aging skin, which is in my, with the amount of collagen present between the two. And this is just an example with skin, but this is true for everywhere else in the body where collagen is present. I think one thing, usually when you're aging, you have more fat, so you want to say, didn't change the fat layer. Mm -hmm. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay. 
So some general symptoms of um, osteogenesis imperfecta. So typically, actually, puppies will die during childbirth, but if they do survive that, um, then they, the symptoms kind of start presenting itself around three to four weeks. And at first, it kind of shown of just being painful, because um, bones will break and fracture very easily, um, sometimes without any known cause. Um, and there will also be slow healing of the bones, and sometimes there will be incomplete healing, depending on how severe it is. And there are also going to be weak teeth, um, and sometimes the, pink, the teeth will actually have a pinkish color to them due to the weak and thin enamel having the blood vessels kind of being shown. And they also have loose joints, which can lead to hyperlexicity. It means like the joint can have over rotation than what is normal. Um, in general, like weak muscles and tendons. Sometimes you can see a curved spine, hearing loss, and then they also have a smaller stature when compared to their siblings. Um, so here's kind of like a picture comparing a healthy bone versus the brittle bone. Um, you can see there's just the amount of spongy bone present. Um, it's a lot larger, kind of due to the lack of collagen present. So kind of diagnosis, so usually the diagnosis process starts um, when they are presented to the vet with multiple fractures without really any known cause. Um, once when you kind of can't identify that and there's a lot of fractures, that's when you start considering um, osteogenesis imperfecta. So x-rays will show multiple fractures and then um, you do radiographs, it can show low, bo low bone density. Um, but to kind of get a definitive test, you can send a buccal or like cheek swab off for testing, and that will test to see if there is a mutation in one of the two genes mentioned earlier. You can also do blood tests to determine the levels of calcium, vitamin D, and phosphorus present in the bone, um, because abnormal levels can indicate this. Um, and also you can do a skin biopsy to determine the abnormalities in type 1 collagen in dogs. So there are different um, types of testing, um, which kind of vary in price. Um, and what different vets can offer, but there is multiple ones. But usually it starts being suspected when you have a lot of small fractures. So the breeds mainly affected, um, as mentioned earlier, dachshunds are the most commonly seen with this. And roughly 12% of dachshunds are carriers for this. Um, hence why it's again, if you are breeding, to do genetic testing to see if they are carriers, just so you don't breed two carriers together um, in case you get puppies in the litter that have this. Um, however, it's also seen in golden retrievers, beagles, collies, poodles, Norwegian elk hounds, and Bedlington terriers. Um, what I believe, I want to say beagles have, um, it's very similar to the golden retrievers, um, instead of being like, was like A1 is like A2. Um, so like a similar connecting gene, um, but is dominant. Um, I'm not sure on, about the others. Um, one thing I kind of found out when looking more into this, there's not a lot of research done in this with dogs. Um, there's a lot of research in humans, which I'm kind of going to later mention, um, but we're just now starting to do studies of it in dogs. So with treatment, um, there is no cure for this. Once it's diagnosed, they have it, this is for life. You can only manage the symptoms. Um, so sometimes they'll do corrective orthopedic surgeries to fix small fractures. Um, they might be put on pain relievers for life just to help with the everyday pain from this. Um, they're gonna switch them to wet food to help prevent teeth damage. They're gonna limit exercise to limit the chance of fractures. Um, there are more studies going out saying that um, adding vitamin C supplement and alginate can help. Um, alginate is commonly given to treat and prevent osteoporosis, um, and it works by slowing bone loss. Vitamin C um, has been shown to help support um, in recovery of collagen fibers. These are two treatments often done in humans, and we're now just starting to translate it into dogs. Um, so there's still relatively new research, but it's starting to see if this does help. However, in more severe cases, the only humane option is euthanasia. Um, 
Um, so I just want to briefly talk about in people. Um, so this slide kind of shows that there's at least seven different types. However, more research going out that there might be nine plus types of this, depending on what gene is infected. Um, so each type has a different amount of severity. Um, like type two is the most severe, where they won't, they usually are born stillborn, um, or will die during childbirth. Um, just kind of example, like so. This is new to dogs, or at least new research in dogs. So we don't know necessarily how many different types there are out there. Um, but it is interesting, they're trying to correlate it more to how many types are in people. So I'm interested to see, as more research comes out, if we're going to show the different types of types and how, like, what their different severities are, how to diagnose. Any questions? Uh, 